Hi, this is Cody Hosterman. I'm going to be demonstrating the version 2 of the Pure Storage VMware vSphere Web Client plugin. Our goal for our VMware vSphere plugin is to copy all the features and functionality within the Pure Storage GUI and integrate them directly in context with inside of the vSphere Web Client. This latest release, version 2, has got us pretty close. One of the first things we enhance is the data store provisioning. Like before, you could create a data store, name it, choose the size, the format, what array you want to provision it to, and what host you'd like to provision it to as well. What we've added in this version is the ability to automatically add that volume into a protection group. A protection group has protection policies that indicate a local snapshot or remote replication policy for any volume inside of that protection group. So in here we've listed all the available protection groups on that flash array and their protection policies, whether they be local and or remote. So this volume that we just created is now inside of that protection policy with local snapshot protection. We can see the new volume has been provisioned within the web client. And if we go to our pure storage GUI, we also see the volume does indeed exist there. And it already has a local snapshot that's been created by that protection group. If we look at the protection group itself, we, set in, we see that indeed that volume is inside of it. The next feature we added is local snapshot management. and We've directly integrated this right into the web client in context to your volumes and other objects within inside of vCenter. So we've had the ability to take a snapshot, copy that snapshot to another volume, uh, restore that snapshot to its existing volume, and also delete those snapshots. So what we'll do right here is we'll take a new snapshot of our data stored that we just provisioned. You can see that that snapshot, as long as the pre-existing one, is there. So we go into the flash array GUI, we see that indeed that snapshot is listed there as well. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take that snapshot and we'll actually create a new VMFest data store and we'll use that snapshot as the basis for that data store. So we'll provision new volume, give it a new name, choose the hosting cluster that we want to actually add it to, which will be the one that we're already using. And we'll also add it to a protection group, the same one we added the original one to. This, of course, is an optional step. So we'll go ahead and create that volume. And so we'll be associating that snapshot with this new volume that we've just created. So it'll have the same data, whether those be virtual machines, other kind of files on it, as the original one, but that point in time from somewhere in the past. Since it is a volume snapshot, we do have to re-signature it, not just mount it. And it'll be presented to our cluster. You can see the volume now appears in the data store view and is ready to use. So what we can also do is we can also restore a data store from a previous point in time snapshot. So we'll take that data store that we just created and what we're going to do right now is we're going to provision a virtual machine to it. What we'll do in this process is we'll create this virtual machine, we'll take a snapshot and then we'll delete that virtual machine and then we'll restore that snapshot to the data store that it current, currently owns it to bring that virtual machine back. So we'll go through here, mainly choosing the defaults as well as the data store that we'd like to sit it on. For the purpose of this demonstration, it's not going to have an OS or anything like that, but it will have its VMX files and other files associated with it. So the virtual machine is created, and now we can take a snapshot of that data store. So going back to that data store object, there's a variety of ways we can do it. Here we'll just right click on it and take a snapshot. We'll give it an optional suffix to indicate that this is the snapshot that has that virtual machine. And it'll be quickly created. So we'll go back to that virtual machine and we'll delete it. Since our snapshots are all metadata based, they can be they're all created extremely quickly. It just takes less than a second for any size volume to be snapshotted on the flash array. So we'll delete this virtual machine. And then we'll move on to restoring that VMFS data store with that snapshot we just created. So if we go back to our snapshot listing. 
We'll right click on that snapshot and we'll do a restore operation. This will reassociate that data store with the data point from past, past in time. Now that the data store has been restored, we can re-register that uh, virtual machine that was previously deleted. So we navigate into the VMFS data store, we'll see that that virtual machine folder is now back, and we'll go ahead and register that VMX file associated with that virtual machine back to the host, and then we can go on and power it on and, and do what we want with it. Pretty simple process. The next thing I want to quickly show is the ability to delete these snapshots as well. This has also been integrated into the web client uh, with our plugin. So we can just simply choose the snapshot we want, right click on it or one of the other options there, and then go ahead and delete it. When we delete it, we have two different options here. If we just delete it, it's going to remain on the flash array for 24 hours and then automatically be completely eradicated, or we can check that box you just saw there and it'll immediately eradicate it from the array. So it's up to you. You can see that that snapshot is now gone in the flash array GUI. So we can also take snapshots of different objects uh, within vCenter as well. So we can right click on a data store cluster and then snapshot all the data stores within, within that cluster or a selection of them and give it an optional suffix. This allows you to quickly create multiple snapshots of different objects uh, within vCenter. So besides just a data store and a data store cluster, we can also do it with a host or even a cluster itself. So what we'll do here is we'll take an entire host and we'll snapshot all the volumes presented to that host. Once again, we can just choose a selection if we choose. We can also do it on an entire cluster. So if you right click on a cluster object, you can take a snapshot of everything in that cluster or a selection of those, of those volumes. The next thing that we've enhanced um, and added into the plugin is the ability to adjust the data store protection. So we can add or remove data stores in, into a protection group or out of a protection group depending on what kind of protection we need for that data store. So we'll list all the valid protection groups for a data store when we choose a data store, and we can either add it or remove it to multiple different protection groups. If it's already in a protection group, it'll be selected when that window pops up. If it's not, it won't be selected. You can see that we now added that data store into a protection group, and it is listed there in the flash right GUI. We can also do this for a host. Uh, we can update the protection for an entire host or host group. So if we choose a host, we can right-click on it, update the data store protection and we can choose any of the valid protection groups for that host. So we're adding this host and all its volumes into a protection group and if we go click on that protection group that was created and we added it to you can see that that host is now listed as a member of that protection group. And we can do the same thing for an ESXi cluster. When we add a cluster to a protection group it's going to add the associated host group on the flash array into that protection group. So all volumes on that flash array inside of that cluster will now be protected by whether policy you've configured for that protection group, whether that be local and or remote. So go ahead and remove that cluster from a protection group and we'll move on. The next thing we enhanced here is the ability to automate some of the configuration of multipathing. A recommended path selection policy for flash array devices in VMware is round robin to leverage the active active nature um, of our array. By default though, it gets claimed to a fixed path selection policy, which only uses one path, which is certainly not optimal. So what we've done with this plugin is we allow you to quickly and auto quickly automate in the GUI changing all these to round robin instead of have to individually do it. So you can do this at a data store, a host, or a cluster level. 
So previously we just changed the path selection policy back to fixed and I'm clicking on this cluster and now it's setting all the flash array devices seen by that cluster to round robin. So we go back and look at the device that we previously changed, we'll see that it is now back to the round robin path selection policy. The last thing I'd like to mention here is some of the volume name management enhancements we've made. When you create a flash array volume, you have to give it a name. And when you mount that data store, you also give it a name. When you're provisioning it with the plugin, it's going to be the same name. But occasionally those names might be changed, either from the VMFest side or from the flash array side. And to keep management simpler, it's nice to have those names remain the same. So what we've done here is re renamed that VMFS to give it a suffix. Um, but now it's in a mismatch with the underlying volume name. So when you bring up the renamed data store wizard in our plugin, it allows you to either change the name of both objects or just the underlying flash array volume. So we'll just do the underlying one to have it match the name of the VMFS. This way you do not need to go back and forth between the R management GUI and the web client to manage the names of the volume and the VMFS. So there are a few more enhancements in the web client plugin. These are the major ones I want to go over today. Thank you.